On today's Apple Daily, why you should definitely update your iPhone today. What is Apple Silicon's Apple Silicon roadmap likely to look like? And will we see bootcamp for Apple Silicon? For the latest Apple news, rumors and leaks, every weekday at 12 UTC, join us in the iCave. I'm iCave Dave and if you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumors every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you don't miss a thing. If you do ring the bell, make sure that you post up hashtag notification squad down in the comments so that I can give you a big shout out at the end of the next video, like the guys at the end of this one. A quick call to action as well for you guys, I hopefully will be live streaming during uh, tonight's Apple earnings call. So we will be covering that as it comes out. I think we can probably get away with using the audio from it, fingers crossed, um, but uh, that's the plan. However, things may adjust based on when Ted comes out of hospital. If you watched yesterday's show, you know what's going on. If you didn't check back in, um, you'll be able to see it. My little boy is at the hospital at the minute. Uh, he's doing very well though. Thank you all for your well wishes yesterday. But let's get into the news why you absolutely need to update your iPhone and iPad today. As predicted today, we got an iOS and iPad OS 14.4 update, plus new Apple Watch, HomePod, and Apple TV software. But this time there are some significant security holes that are being fixed in this software, as well as the usual trivial bug fixes and the addition of some find my stuff type features. Now these are what are known as zero day exploits. And while I'm no security researcher, these are the ones you want to avoid. It basically means that this is a security issue that has been discovered because it was being actively used, not found and patched ahead of time. So in other words, update your stuff now. The first of these describes a malicious application that may have been able to elevate privileges and Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited. While the second is an issue with WebKit that runs the Safari browser, allowing a remote attacker to cause an arbitrary code execution. Again, there have already been two reports from different researchers that this issue may have already been actively exploited. There are, of course, also a bunch of mini feature updates like the support for Find My Stuff type devices, which can really suggest we'll be seeing air tags pretty soon, although we have been saying that for about two years at this point. So who knows? There's also support for U1 based handoff to HomePod mini from iPhone. Uh, so some fun reasons to update as well as the more terrifying and pressing security holes. So please pass that update message on to your friends and family members too, because if you're watching this, you're probably the person that they go to when their stuff breaks or doesn't work properly because they're getting weird ad pop-ups. And this is the kind of stuff that the security holes like this might cause as well as more terrifying things like, you know, them taking over your device mining Bitcoin, all that kind of stuff. So we've got a couple more iCave answers to do today as well. So we're going back to Rob, ooh, who was our printer guy from yesterday. Thank you, by the way, for the suggestions for uh, printer scanner faxes for him. But Rob ooh, asks, with A15 coming out in late 2021, do you think Apple will push out to M2 Max to match? Or do you think they will try to milk the M1 still and put out M1X late in 2021? even when the A15 becomes available. Or perhaps they will have both M2 and M1 Max for different pro level Macs, just like they have A12, A13, and A14 iPhones for sale at the same time. So really cool question actually. Um, and obviously all of the names that we're talking about right now are completely arbitrary. They are things that Apple uh, we're expecting them to do if they use the same kind of names that they've used in the past for stuff. But at the moment, M1 is based on the A14 architecture. That means that the cores inside, the four efficiency and four high performance cores, which are known as Ice Storm and Firestorm cores, are the same cores that you get in your iPhone. Now, if you've got an iPhone 12, you've got four efficiency cores, four Ice Storm cores, and you've got two Firestorm cores, which are the high powered ones. Um, if you have got an M1 Mac, then you've got four of each, so it's a perfect balance. What we're expecting is that when the M2 Max come out, which will be around about the same time this year as came out last year, that they would be based on the A15's version of the Ice Storm and Firestorm cores. I don't know if they change the names every year, but I would assume they do. Essentially, the M2 would be based on faster versions of the efficiency cores and power cores from A15. Now, the difference with M1X or M1 Performance, whatever they decide to call it, is that they will be still based on the A14 style cores, but there will be more of them. So exactly like they've done in the past with the iPad Pros, you will get more fast cores and probably more graphics grunt 
compared to the base level A14. So if we were talking about an A14X, we would basically have an M1. So the A14X that we were expecting is basically what the M1 has become. So you've got the four efficiency cores, four high powered cores. So that's, that's kind of the way that we expect them to do things. It could be completely different. Of course, this is what we're expecting though. The M1X chips will be lower powered individually, but there'll be so many more of them that you will get way more power than an M2 processor will give you. And then when Apple releases the M2X or whatever it might be called, that will give you more of the higher powered processors. If, does that make sense? That will give you more of the next generation processors. So I'm expecting that the M2 processors will come out. And as we discussed yesterday, that the M1 processors will stick around in a lower cost version. So very much like you were saying, with the A12, A13 and A14 still being in different iPhones. So you've got A12 in the iPhone XR, you've got A13 in the iPhone 11 and the SE, um, and then you've got A14 in the current flagship line. Once A15 becomes the flagship line, you will probably keep around one of the iPhone iPhone 12s with A14, you'll keep around the iPhone 11 with A13, and that will probably be the range at that point. So I do predict that we will still see some M1 Max for sale because Apple is not making multiple SKUs of these processors. So whereas Intel is at the moment offering multiple different levels of processors, their i3s, i5s, i7s in each generation, I think what Apple is more likely to do is keep the M1s around and reduce the price so that they get an, a lower starting point price and then the new processors with new designed Macs will come in at the original price. Um, so you've got a premium version and you, you're now starting to build up, up your back catalog of less powerful Macs, but still absolutely capable. So hopefully that gives you an answer that you were hoping for, um, fingers crossed. Next question comes in from Janos Weimer. Janos asks, when will Bootcamp be available for M1 Macs? I know that Apple is waiting for Microsoft to allow work on that, but is there any news on how it is going? Now, this is a, a really interesting one. There is no guarantee that Bootcamp will ever be available for M1 Max or for Apple Silicon in general. But at the moment, we know that it's physically capable of running the software. We've seen some developers that have literally just hacked on the ARM version of Windows onto an M1 Mac and been able to get it running and it runs better than it runs on Surface products because the M1 is way more powerful than the processors from Qualcomm that are put into the Surface products. So it's physically possible. Uh, licensing is the bigger issue and Apple finding a way to make it dual boot if that's something that they actually want to do. Now there's no guarantee that Apple wants to offer dual boot options. There's no reason that they have to. It's very much something that they kind of added into the Intel Macs when they first arrived uh, back in the mid 2000s. Um, and that was just to give an extra reason for people to buy a Mac so that they could actually run both operating systems. However, now that we've got to the point where Apple has got a bit bigger market share, not big by any means. I think it's somewhere around 8% of the computer market. We will probably find out more about this stuff later on in that earnings call. Um, but there's not necessarily a reason that Apple needs to be able to run Microsoft Windows on their hardware anymore. Rosetta runs very, very well. Um, and it has been shown already that you can run Windows within Parallels. Again, it's not licensed at this point, so it's not something I recommend people go out and do. Parallels is still in beta, but it is technically possible to do. It can be done. And I think more likely uh, the way that Apple will go is to hope that Microsoft offers licensing on non-Microsoft branded hardware um, so that it can be run in an emulator or in parallels or something along those lines and just brute force it because the amount of power in these M1 chips should very quickly be able to give you a really good experience of that without actually needing to dual boot. Um, if you think of the ARM processors, uh, the ARM instruction set based processors that Apple Silicon is built on, um, which is very similar to what we have in an iPad, you wouldn't expect to be able to dual boot an iPad. I don't know what all of the behind the scenes architecture stuff is, but because you would need to partition your internal drive to create a boot drive for that, I'm not 100% sure it's something that Apple wants to do, but we will see. Um, at the moment, there is no news on it becoming an unofficially supported capacity, but we will see. It's one of those things that we just kind of have to cross our fingers and hope. And otherwise, there will always be people hacking Microsoft Windows onto it 
uh, and it could become the new equivalent of Hackintoshes because Hackintoshes are not going to be a thing with Apple Silicon. Um, Hackintoshing will die in its current form, but it might be that people who want to run Windows start to hack Windows onto Mac hardware because it's so much more powerful. <laughs> How interesting that that's the place that we've got to. Thank you so much for the question. If you've got any questions you would like me to answer in a future show, all you need to do post up down in the comments with hashtag iCaveAnswers and I will do my best to answer it in a future show for you. Next up we have our notification squad and these are the guys that have liked the video, subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell and then let me know in the comments. New members today, Alric Samuel Godfrey, The College Professor, Voag, I assume, and my channel. Actually, there's two of these guys have asked questions in the past as well, so this is pretty cool. Um, and I was told in no uncertain terms in the comments that my channel is not growing fast enough. So please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about it. If you like what we're doing here, do let your friends know, share the videos. Uh, it would really be appreciated because I would love for this to become my job. <laughs> right now, I'm also balancing another job. So thank you so much. Don't forget to keep an eye on the channel and if you've hit that notification bell, you will be let know if we are doing that live stream later. The, the plan is that we will, but sometimes life happens. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.